Hey, this is Charles from ATO, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you our Upright Studio Piano, our 1901 Upright Studio Piano, which is a beautiful, beautiful upright. It's the best one I've ever heard. It was actually manufactured by the oldest piano maker in the world. Uh, they also supplied Beethoven with pianos. Uh, this one is a little later than Beethoven. It's from 1901. Uh, the strings are original, just like our 1928 piano as well. And with that comes a certain sound. Um, I'm personally a big fan of original strings. It's a little bit like wine, it develops a personality over time. And the great thing about original strings is that even when they get tuned, they sort of go back and just settle in their core state. So you have a chorusy, emotional sound, and you won't find that in newer pianos. If you take our 1990 and compare it to our 1928, or you take our 99 and compare it even to uh, this 1901 upright, you're gonna hear a notable difference. There's less chorus in the modern ones, and the basses are more defined in the modern pianos, but the mid-range, where we play most of the stuff, it just has an emotional quality in the older ones. So. Uh, that's important for me and this library is hands down probably the most emotional upright I've ever heard and I'll try to demonstrate that to the best of my ability uh, in the demo but before we get started let me just show you a little bit here uh, let's enter the piano here uh, first of all we got our response button that's awesome because instead of sitting and configure your controller in terms of its velocity sensitivity you can actually just do it here uh, I personally prefer it having a little down which gives us more soft quality to it uh, but if you want a harder piano with sort of easier hard action, you can just dial it up here as well. But I like it down here around 10 o'clock. Uh, you can also control the resonance. You can also control the sound of the keys. That's simply the fingers hitting the keys. We also got pedal volume and uh, the default and library loads like this. And I, again, I prefer it a little low. I don't like the volume for the pedal to be uh, too intruding. You can also control the release triggers and the noise. And of course, you got your ADSRs here as well. Um, in this demo, I'm also going to be going through our different microphones. We have a wealth of vintage microphones, both old Neumanns, Kohl's, uh, Neve ribbon mics, and a variety of other ones. We actually use 24 microphones in the whole recording setup. It's kind of crazy. We also have two different reverbs. Uh, let me just shut that one off to start with here. Uh, both sampled from the Precasti and the TC Electronics are so just awesome. But uh, why don't we just get into it right now. Uh, let me play a little bit here with the sustains to start with. You're gonna notice that there's a triangle up here and it actually defines that we both got pedal up and pedal down action for the piano. So let me just play a little bit here. Um, I'll start by playing um, just some pedal up. So a little more defined notes and then the pedal down, uh, which has more of a, that emotional, typical quality we know for pianos. But we actually did both and they react in real time. So it's awesome switching between them. And let me improvise something with the pedal down as well. And then um, once I'm done with that, let me just try to um, do both so you can hear what it sounds like, both pedal up and pedal down, just compared um, sort of at a more note basis. Um, I think you're gonna notice a, a notable distinction. You get all the resonance when you hold down the pedal and you get that more defined, little more pop friendly note when you play with the pedal up. You probably notice the difference between playing like a... You can hear the resonance kick in that way. It's just awesome. Uh, let me also show the staccatissimo here, which is round robin based. Um, so you got natural variations every time you play the note. This is really great for sort of those shorter notes. Um, sometimes it's really hard to emulate the attack with a sustain of a short note. The piano racks rather differently when you play short notes on it than when you do sustain. So of course we also sample that with round robin as well. So you can hear that variation in the sound every time you click, it generates a new sound. It's just, it helps a lot, particularly with faster playing style for the staccatissimo. Whereas with traditional sustains and sample pianos, they tend to generate a little of that machine gun effect if you play them fast as well. 
Let me also play here with the half damper. Uh, we actually sample both regular sustains, you know, pedal up and down, half damper, and una corda, which is the soft pedal as well. It's not really been sampled before, and it's actually my favorite articulations, but the half damper is very close as well. Uh, it has that beautiful, uh, warm quality to it, very expressive. Um, it really reacts well in the keys in terms of sort of dynamic feedback. Um, so yeah, let me try to play here, and then we'll go to the una corda after that. All right, and now let's go down to the una corda as well. So this is at the softest I've ever heard a piano being played, and uh, we had to do a lot of tricks to really get the sound. Um, it's with the soft pedal on, and uh, let me try to play it um, dry first, and then let's try to add some reverb as well, so you can hear the difference between uh, the dry version and these awesome reverbs we got in here. Uh, but just check it out. This is as emotional and warm as a piano can. I ever heard it actually. And let's add a little bit of the um, Bricasti down here as well. Um, it's gonna add a lot more volume to the sound. It's just beautiful, fat and warm, <laughs> if that's a good thing. And let me just play a little bit here, um, dialing the reverb in and out so you can hear the difference. Let me just play a little more with it here and then, then we'll go into some comparisons between the tape version of the same articulation as well. Let me also show you a comparison here between the Ornacorda recorded with the main patch and then our tape patch. As you may know, the entire library actually contains two different variations of all the patches. And what we did was that we created the high fidelity version here, recorded at 9624, but we also ran everything through a Studer tape deck, the A820. And it's not just like we did an emulation, like ran everything through a plug and we actually ran the whole thing through tape. So there's a notable difference in the sound and it's really to give you the best options possible. So you have like the best vintage microphones here, um, whether it's Neumann or Coles or ribbon mics from Neve or whatever, you have the two best reverbs here, but you also got true tape variations here and it is true tape. Recording to tape is absolutely different than operating in the normal sort of digital reel. Um, but try to check out the difference here. Let me just play um, articulations. You're gonna see me switch back and forth here and just hear uh, the difference between the sound. Uh, there's that warmth to the tape. And even though you might find the on a quarter warm here, it even gets more sort of a little more present perhaps in the tape. Um, it's funny because a lot of people associate tape with warmth and surely it's warm as well, but it's also more present. There's a clarity in the tape, which is kind of weird when you think that it would be more clear than a di the digital version, but um, try to check them out and make your own opinion. So to me, the digital version is actually more warm, but there's a pristine clarity to the tape and some unique warmth, I would call it, uh, that gives it a just a tad more clarity, I think. So, but you know, it's subjective just like wine and many other things in life. You're just gonna have to form your own opinion, but you have it here, you got true tape if you want it, and you also got super reverbs, and you also got the microphones here. And uh, let me just load um, all the different ones. Uh, normally, I am um, this entire demo here has been played with a mixed microphone here, uh, which is a mix of 24 microphones. We used 24 uh, mics in all the sessions uh, to record the piano. So we took them all and made them into what we call the mixed microphone. But we also got 
these other guys here. And uh, let me just play a little bit here and then isolate the mic so you can hear them individually, what they sound like. And really there's a notable distinctive difference. And the core idea here is really to give you the tools so you can create your own sound. You got the best custom mics here ran through uh, an old vintage Neve console. So you really, it does not get better than this in terms of specs. So you can really design your own sound by combining the mics. But uh, yeah, let me just um, play them individually here. But anyway, yeah, check out the demos. We got more videos as well. And um, we also have another video where I'm demonstrating all the prepared articulations. One of the great things about the libraries is that we didn't just uh, record uh, all the normal stuff here, but we also did prepared articulations and it's really extensively sampled. Um, you also got naturally the, the reverbs and the mics like I just demonstrated here, but there's a wealth of other articulations as well. So check the other video for that if you want to hear them. Um, they're almost better than the core libraries. So yeah, that's it. This was Trolls from 8DO signing out.